Hello and welcome to the second part of Poulter's and Machine videos. I forgot to mention one thing in previous video and that is what are actually the benefits of having Poulter's and Machine. Well, there are two things actually. First one is having pretty much free filament, well, if your time is free, out of the bottles unless you don't buy bottles or you have a system in your country that pays for bottles like in Germany. And the second one is producing less trash, because even if you do not intend to print with that filament or it doesn't come out perfectly, you can still use both unprocessed stripes and wires in numerous ways. Quick example is making a rope for cloth drying. Part 2 of Pultrusion series will focus mostly on electronics. So let's start. If you have chosen DC motor as your gearbox drive, you are pretty much set. There is no need to employ microcontroller. Just make sure you have a matching power supply that can provide enough power and correct voltage to the motor. However, you will still need to heat the cartridge and potentially change the speed of motor if needed. For that, Petamentor uses W1209 module with some modification that can be found on their website. Downside is that you will need another way to measure block temperature, as even with modified version you will not be able to see higher temperatures on its screen. And again, there is a solution to that, which is module named XH-B310 that should handle temperatures up to 800 degrees Celsius. Optionally, to regulate the speed of the DC motor, you can use PWM DC motor speed controller that is pretty cheap and can be found pretty much everywhere. Overall, because of the amount of additional parts required to fine-tune the Pultrusion machine with DC motor, it will not be cheaper than the option with a stepper motor. At least not much cheaper. When I did my calculations, it was at least twice as expensive, but it may be different depending on your location. If you have chosen a stepper motor as your gearbox drive, you'll have to control it somehow. That means using microcontroller. Pretty much any microcontroller on the market can drive it with the help of dedicated drivers such as A4899. There's really no point in buying silent stepper drivers, as motor will be spinning with a constant speed. When it comes to a choice of microcontroller, I would suggest two options. Either AVR slash Arduino MCUs or STM32 ARMS mostly because they have plenty of examples available on the internet and you will be able to get support easily. I have personally chosen Arduino simply because I had one lying around. Schematics are really simple as all you need is one or two transistors, couple of resistors and capacitors. That of course excludes any voltage regulators that may be necessary. Our microcontroller has three tasks to perform. First, is to control the stepper drivers which requires two capacitors. Second is to read the temperature of the thermistor which requires one resistor and optionally one capacitor. And the third one is to control the transistor to heat the cartridge which requires one or two transistors and one resistor. Optionally you may use LCD shield or just any LCD display. Additionally, you might want to use some buttons and all of that will help you to see the temperature and control the speed of the motor. But this part is not required if you want as cheap as possible solution. Keep in mind, however, that without an LCD and buttons, you will have to recompile firmware whenever you decide to change anything. In my tests, I have also found for my temperature readings to be really inconsistent and I had a tons of problems with it. So as a result, I have added a static voltage divider which consists of just two resistors to another ADC channel to compensate for some hardware issues. Overall, the most important reason why I went with microcontroller approach is simple. Poltrusion machine is pretty tedious to operate. So you might want to have some external tools such as filament wielder, filament rewinder, which could be easily controlled with just a single MCU. Remember that this process is kinda tedious, so the more manual labor you can automate, the better. Keep in mind that this is still prototype machine. 
When it comes to which transistors to use or which stepper motors, don't worry about it just yet. I will make a schematic in the last part of this video series and explain available options. Next part will cover preparation of bottles, bottle cutter and different method of cutting bottles. I did a couple of tests on various kinds of bottles and let me tell you one thing straight away. Some bottles are simply not worth the effort. Great examples are half liter bottles with heavily patterned surface such as this one. Not only you won't get much yield out of it, you will also spend significant amount of time preparing it. Absolute best bottles are the ones that have no patterns and are completely straight. However, common 1.5 liter cola bottles can be cut without pretty much any preparation. The very minimum you have to do in order to prepare bottle for protrusion is to remove the label. Some bottles do not have much glue on it and the removal of label is super simple, like the said 1.5 liter cola bottle. If you don't remove the glue from the bottle, your protrusion nozzle may clog and requires some maintenance from time to time. I was however able to get away from leaving the glue on it. Other type of bottles that have a paper label and a tons of glue like this one require more preparation. Aside from removing the label, you will also have to remove the glue as there are tons of it on it. WD-40 works pretty well in that regard. Or just use a dedicated label remover. After removing the glue make sure to degrease it with some alcohol like isopropanol, also known as IPA. If you opt in to straighten up the bottles, there are a couple of ways to do it. All of them involve two things, pressure and heat. There are a couple of videos on YouTube that may come in handy depending on the tools you have at hand. I have chosen just not to do it as it requires significant amount of work and the bottles I am currently using can be pulled through it without this process. Next part is bottle cutter and honestly it could be a 10 minute video by itself. However, I will try to condense the knowledge I gained with testing out couple of designs. Step 1. Do not use any kind of single blade bottle cutter. They are terrible and you won't get consistent results with them. Step 2. Do not use any kind of hand stick designs. They are also inconsistent. Step 3. Do not use any design that doesn't have some sort of metal supports beneath the actual cutting zone, such as washers or pennies. Plastic beneath will wear out very quickly. Overall, the best results I had was using shear-like cutting with a sharpened bearings. I have tested four designs. One from Petpool, which uses kind of big bearings, but works pretty well. One from Recreator 3D, which is what I am currently using. It is simple, but it also has a space for metal guiding rod. And a couple of no-name designs from Thingsverse. But honestly, most of them failed at the very beginning. Verdict is pretty clear. Use a sharpened bearing cutter with the metal supports beneath the cutting zone. I also need to mention that there are some rotary cutters that have already sharpened discs and may work pretty well, however I have personally did not test it nor have any design for it. It may be something to test out in the future. Now the hard part. You can find a couple of videos about sharpening the bearings. You can use the micro drill or an angle grinder depending on the size of your bearings but it takes at least a few tries to get them done properly, so make sure to buy at least a couple of bearings before you do that. Ultimately, I had my bearings prepared on a lathe, and it will obviously be superior, but it will not be cheap if you don't have a friend with lathe. Last part of bottle preparation is cutting the first stripe. I honestly debated myself whenever I should record a video how to do it, but this process is really simple and there are a lot of videos out there. All you need to do is to make hole near the bottom with some blade, mount the bottle on the rod, insert the first piece into your bottle cutter and pull enough 
so you will get a smooth stripe. This will be it for this video, let me know if the, in the comments below if I hadn't missed anything. In the next part I will cover the nozzle and a new amazing way to get yourself consistent results without drilling. Heaters and blocks to use as well as how to initiate the pulling process. We'll also mention a couple of caveats. Last step will be machine assembly, wiring design and preparations to print with PET filament including slicer settings. Hope you learned something and make sure to subscribe if you liked the video.